Well, I'm here having to go at a canal. Fingers crossed, might be able to pick up a perch or a small pike. Um, I'm not a great lover of canals, as you know, but this is a pretty one. I like fishing down this quite pretty. I only come back once a year. And my reason for coming is actually twofold. It's the first decent bit of weather we've had. And secondly, I figured it would be clear because there's not been boat traffic because all the various lockdowns. So that's what my theory is. I think it's actually quite ironic. Lockdown and a dumb mill lock. There you go, people can look it up. There's people fishing, I think, right down that corner down there. But I'm not going to be fishing for silverfish. I'm going to be trying for perch on lures and possibly a small pipe. There's not going to be giant fish in here, but you never know. Should be a bit of peace and quiet. And of course it is the countryside in which you are fishing it makes a huge amount of difference. Let's get going. It looks very brown and coloured as though there's been a, a boat going through it, which is really unfortunate. So I might just be here a few hours, have a few throws. I'm not quite sure what those boys are down there for. Well, immediately, guys, I think I might have made a mistake by coming all this way. It's so coloured. Crikey, you're going to have to be lucky to get anything in there. So, I'm going to give it an hour or so. If not, I'm going to go back home, try somewhere else. Maybe I'll pop into Watmore, try and catch a carp. I had figured, with no rain, dry, why is it coloured? I don't understand why it's coloured. I can't work half our rivers and canals out, to be honest. The lady in the tackle shop, or sells the ticket, said, not many people have been fishing. I think it should be good. Anyway, all I'm fishing with at the moment is this tiny lure here, a very small lure. I haven't got a clue what rod it is. Real, I guess about 10, 12 pound line. I was just gonna have a flick around here and see if we can't get a tape. It might actually want a bigger lure, less takes, but at least they can see it. Maybe a fluorescent color. First cars on a snake there. So immediately, I can't even see this lure in the water. It's not to say the fish can't see it, but I just feel better as an angler with a bright, brighter fluoro coloured one on. So I'm going to make a change and uh, have a few casts, spend a bit of time here, and then work my way downstream. It might not be so coloured upstream, and there are some guys fishing, so we we'll see what they're up to up there. Well, back in the car, guys. That didn't take very long. About an hour's drive for nothing. A wasted, total wasted journey. The trouble is, sometimes if you ask people, oh, what's it like down there? If they have a vested interest in selling you something, they're going to tell you anything. I've been caught loads of times. So you really need local knowledge from somebody who generally does tell you whether the conditions are on or off. Um, you know, not somebody really with a sort of vested interest. But still, onwards and upwards, well, I can't go onwards and downwards, can I? I've already gone downwards. So I've given it like 45 minutes. I know I'm wasting my time. I'm going to go back. I've got one local canal that I know is clear, but there's hardly any fish in it. So I'll try that. And then I might just drop into Watmore and try and salvage a fish. So it's one of those days, guys. Fabulous weather. Back into the winter. Well, spring, really, just into spring. And fingers crossed, I'll catch you guys something. Sandwich on the way, I think. Well, I'm back on. Another canal, this one, I'll turn it around in a second, is a lot clearer. I used to fish here as a kid. Now I'm talking 50, 55 years ago. And from here, just around that bend, was an aquarium. It was absolutely amazing. You'd see tench in there, not really carp, perch, fry, pike, roach, rudd. You'd see them in the margins around the edge. Now. It's just, it's not, it's not even a shadow of its former self, to be honest. But then, where is? I'm going to have a few throws here. It's got a tinge of a sort of bloom in it, I guess, a bit of algal bloom in there. We're going to have a few throws, and then I'm going to go down by the bridge, have a throw there, because I did see some fry. But it has a stream down there. I suppose I could go and have a look at it. I don't want my stuff pinched at the top. I might even have a throw in there for a second or two. We used to catch fish in there years ago, gudgeon. 
gudgeon and small perch, small roach, and pieces of worm. Now, bad news is, I just had a phone call from Carol at Watmore. It is absolutely gobsmackingly rammed. I think it's 35 anglers there. I've taken a gamble that some of them are going to pack up and I've got space to fish. And just see if I don't catch anything here, which I may well not, uh, then I can drop in there and just have two or three hours. Right, I've gone back to the small lure, that little small one there, because there's no real big pike in here. It's not like it used to be years ago. So I'll just have a quick throw around and see if I can't uh, get a bump or two. So I'll keep my rod fairly high, which I don't normally for lure fishing. And just twitching and tweaking it, it along the edges and across the middle here. Let's see if I get a bump or a bang. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, even though the other place is packed. I popped up the supermarket, get some sweet corn, hot dog segments. What else did I get? Some bread, yeah. And uh, prawns, I've got prawns. It's just rammed. As soon as we get a bit of sun come out, they're in there. No takes yet. So I'm using this size lure because that's about the size of the fry that I saw in there. Right, a few more casts, have a move and then uh, I'll pack up totally. Well, as you can imagine, I haven't caught anything yet. <clears throat> I've given it a good 20 minutes. Um, lovely views here, look at that views across there. Wouldn't be bad living there, would it? But you can see what happens is, <laughs> I thought it would be clear, which it sort of is. So the boats aren't clearing the weed out, so it is weedy, especially in the margins just along there. Well, um, what to do? I think there's a bridge down there, might try around the bridge. Sometimes perch like around the bridge areas. I could get this hook out, be handy. Also going to try here, because you can see over there, there's, the sun's going around here. Although there's not many leaves on the trees, there's a bit of a shadow line there. And sometimes perch and pike, the predators, like laying in that shadow line. And indeed the bait fish can as well, you know, if it gets too hot up there, maybe the uh, oxygen content is not that great. So they're going to want to go where the oxygen is best, where they're cooler, like we would do on a hot day. So it's just worth, before I write it off totally and go to Watmore, just half a dozen casts in this shadow line area and down there in the bridge where I know it is shaded. We all know perch generally like bridge areas, and they would do years ago, but... Who knows now? Who knows? As I said <coughs> earlier, I'm not, when I first got to the other place, I'm not a lover of canals. I'll be the first to admit it, I'm not a lover of canals. The only time I've done any good really is when I've baited up, raked it, baited it up. And of course, there weren't the boats around years ago when I fished it. And now there's more, more boats and more swans to mess up your fishing. But some of the canals can produce some really good fish still, don't write them all off. Mind you, I'm writing this one off in a minute. One fish could turn it around and I'll be totally gobsmacked. I feel, oh, what's that leaf? Absolutely idyllic, not much wind. I should be out in the boat, sea fishing, I know I should be, but they're very big tides, what we call a spring tide. And it's just still a little bit early. I feel it's a little bit early for the, the black bream and the place and the what I call the good eating fish. So it's a question of just working away, getting a bit of fishing in. Nothing followed. I haven't seen a follow. Let's get down by the bridge. Well, I've moved on to uh, last knockings. <laughs> got about two and a half hours I can squeeze in. I got to what more eventually. Got a float on the inside of the rushes, it's rammed across the back there. There's only two swims left, one here, one there, and a the guy, I think two have packed up on that side. Wind's picked up, it's blown in my face. The float won't shock properly, I've got to change floats in a minute. So I'll be down to about an hour and a half fishing, but you never know. You never know here what more could salvage the blank. 
I've got a six, what have I got? Six or seven, number, is it a number eight shot on there? I'm changing that to probably BBs. I'm pretty well laying on with the float at the moment. It's what they call laying on, so it's flat. <clears throat> so I didn't want it dragging in, but the float is too light for the conditions. So I'm gonna to have to change that to a Wagner float. And here I've got um, a three line piece of, no, not foam, just like that, hot dog segment which I have done good on some other waters, but I really need a day. I've chucked some out, I've got sweet corn out there. That's only just thawed out, that's for a trip tomorrow, but I thought I'd throw in some in. A little bit of ground bait there. So not a great deal, but I'm here with the trusty hold up your rods business down there. And looking down here, you can see my attachment for the, for the barrow that I did uh, some time ago, and it's working really well. So I'm figuring just with the BB shot on there, if I get a take, it's going to be a real butt ringer, what we call, you know, slamming up. Put the reel on back wind, just in case. And I think I'm going to change that float now, because this wind's going to come up. It's going to be like a sort of thermal wind, I think. So, the fight to save the blank is on. Finally, I've hooked a fish on the float, close in. I've missed about eight takes, I would say which I assume a roach on single grain of sweet corn, a couple of pulls on the big piece of luncheon meat, or hot dog segment, and now I've got a tiny little square miniature piece of hot dog segment on the usual light line hook link. Messed around ages that float went under and I've got him on now. Obviously, it's a carp, I'd say, or a world record roach. long way from getting in on this light line. Still a pleasure to get fish hooked up though, I have to say. Is this going to save a three venue blank? I mean, it's been a tough one. I've had several guys walk past saying that uh, it's been tough today. Very, very tough. With this bright weather, water's cold. Um, they said that it was below freezing last night. Right, I'm going to click this off, guys, so I get a little bit closer. As the saying goes, I might be here sometime. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Looks like game over for me, people. I'm going to go through the other guy's lines, I think. Yeah, I think this one's gonna gonna bust me off. Or I'm gonna be out of line, and it'll still bust me off. Right, I'll click him off and see if I can work on him for a while. There we go, lovely gold colour. I'm gonna put him back with the net, that one. Saved the blank. Wow, that's been a tough day. And that was on a tiny, tiny square of hot dog segment. So that was on a, look, that's a segment I'm using on the bottom there, on the uh, alleged carp rod, and I'm just scissoring this down like this to make a, a tiny square, just that size, because I'm on a, about a size 14 here. I don't know, now it's about 16, 14 or 16, so I just pop it in, same as I would do a big piece of lunch of meat for barbel, and just leave the hook point sticking out. Well, well, well. Just sink the float. Coming too close. Put the other one out in a minute. And the last of the ground bait going in. I've been very slow apparently. There goes the ground bait. One, two, 
I got nearly accurate. And then this one. What the hell was that? That's the standard piece I'm using. The segment, as you can see there, just got a BB shot. That's just resting on the bottom, just to the right of the float. Just letting it sink down and lay on the bottom. Bobbin is, as you can see, Peter washing up the bottle top. And then I just, just tighten up here. I have to keep the handle at the bottom on a single handle reel, just keep it on the bottom. And then I just wind it up like this. See the bobbin coming up? Just like that. All right, do I give them some more corn? I think I might give them a little bit more of this hot dog segment. Just small bits. But this way the roach shouldn't uh, nibble away a lot because I've missed, I haven't hit a roach yet to be honest. Let's give them a few free samples. Hot dog's really, really good for barbel. And carp, close in. All right, sit back and enjoy. Oh, what an evening. This is now the witching hour. We're down to the last knockings. I've gone back on sweet corn, single grain of sweet corn. So, about the toughest session I've had for a long time to save a blank. Probably done 160 odd miles. Yeah, I think I'm going to call this one. One evening for float fishing though. Now, a couple of people have been asking me, how many books have I written? And other guys, when I used to do a lot of writing journalism, stuff like that, years ago, I'd be writing away happily and uh, doing the fishing articles to different magazines. I think I've done 30 or 40 magazines, international magazines as well, different publications. Good, happy days, lots of fish, writing still articles. Um, so I've done a lot of that, obviously, um, from the age of about 19. But some people go, I've got every single one of your books, Graham. And I thought, well, I've done 16. Well, I just realised up on here, I, don't, I think I've got, I think I've got 18 books. I did 18 different books. So, has anybody out there got the complete collection? Now, look, I'm not selling them. They're all probably only on second-hand places now, car boot sales, where else would you get them? Oh, antique book places. But you can still get them. You can still pick them up. I've seen one or two in, um, in the charity shops as well. I always go through the book section there looking for my own books. No, so anyway, I'm going to just uh, give five minutes and show you the different species and the wide variety of stuff I have done and see if there's anybody out there who has actually got every single one of the books. So there we go, the very first book I wrote, Sea Angling in the Isles of Scilly. I've been over there several times and I was fishing with some of the guys off the rocks. Um, what did they call that headland? I can't remember now. Pendennis, Penennis, something like that, Penin probably Penennis. And there's a place around there called Deep Point on St Mary's, which is really good fishing there. Okay, what else have we got? Go down here. I did a series called Go Fishing. They wanted me to do the Go Fishing series because I did all round angling and I was probably the only guy that did all round angling, um, you know, and writing about it and doing the photography. And I did skates and rays. Some of you have got those. I've obviously done Go Fishing, continued. The fast success that series was, Go Fishing for Bass. All for beginners, all for beginners. That one was over 
I believe that was Hookhead Peninsula. Is that County Wexford? You Irish guys tell me. Hookhead, that was on one of the strands there. Can't remember the name of the strand. I think that was Ireland as well. Then I did one which was really successful. Sea fishing baits. <laughs> these things, these are, these are rare things that we used to catch lots of years ago off the beach, etc. Cod. Obviously not perk fishing off the beach. And look, there's an old Mitchell 624 multiplier with 140 year old mono line I used and different types of perks. These were ones I made up myself out of copper tubing, close the end, a key ring, a treble hook, close the end, a swivel and tie it on and away you go. Obviously I do all round fishing which is why I love it. I would go mundanely, totally off the scale if I had to do one species. I like everything. It's a guide to small water trout fishing in the south. And that I believe that, I don't know which river that was. There might have been, before it got a bit overgrown, was the original, I don't know whether that was Rockbourne at all, I don't know. It looks a bit wide for it, doesn't it, the, the, the river at Rockbourne in Hampshire. They get some really big, look, anybody who wants to tip on fly fishing, Rockbourne's getting some really big trout there now. This is the Stillwater Lakes. So I did the freshwater fishing baits, some of you guys have got that, and I used to do a lot of this. Free lining for chub, look at the old Mitchell reel there. Takes me back a few years. Freshwater fishing baits. The story type one I did, Big Game Fishing, The Great Adventure, they came back and asked me to do that on the international fishing I did because I was totally hooked on big game fishing for years, many years, I, over, well I've stopped counting, 250 mile in, sometimes you see the spikes that are left over from the, when they've took them out the cook. That was a monkfish that was over 50 pounds, an Irish specimen at the time, and that was fishing Blacksall Bay, I think that's County Mayo. My God, we had some tote fishing up there, I can tell you, years ago. Let's come down, I've got to come off the ladder, I've got that many books. Oh! Go fishing for carp, did that one. Nice looking carp there. A gentleman there is probably embarrassed going, oh my God, how young do I look there? He's probably about 48 or 53 by now. I think, I think that was a decent carp from Summerley, one of the Summerley waters. Tench fishing, I used to like my tench fishing, I had some really big bags, over £100. Did the tench fishing, couldn't tell you where that one was. And that was, I remember, I think, I think it was in one of the Hampshire waters when there were loads and loads of tench around, we used to go fishing, where you see the baits we were using, really complicated modern baits. Sweet corn, worms, that sort of same stuff. And what I did enjoy doing, go fishing for chub and barbel. And... Uh, as you see, no way map there, you just put them down on the wet grass, that's all we did years ago. They hadn't invented way maps then. Go fishing for pike. Plenty of pike, used to catch a lot of pike, a lot of pike. Um, I don't know where that one was. I bet you life, that's probably an island as well. And then from there I went to go fishing for trout. Let's move the toolbox for you. And that was, I think, taken, um, going by the bluebells, over at Willinghurst Fishery, which is now a freshwater course fishery, but it used to be a trout fishery. And the trout were caught there. That's one brown and one rainbow. And I think it was on dry fly looking at the box, if I recall. Yes, that's what I enjoy doing. Barbel fishing and shark fishing. Go fish for shark. That was a mate, Adrian Hutchins, again. That was somewhere on the west coast of Ireland. I don't actually remember where that was, to be honest. A uh, nice blue shark there. We just tag them and release them. This one. Go fishing for cod. Extremely young, good looking man, I mean. Now he's not been picked up for a stand in for James Bond, I don't know. Even the moustache is black. But look at the size of the cod. That one was, I believe, down off Eastbourne, although I have had them over 30. Um, down off a of loo, it's mentioned in one of the books as well, when I was about, oh, very young, 20, 18, 18 or 19, I think. I think I was barely driving. So a few books there. So successful, let me get up on the ladder again. More small water trout fishing in the south. That's telling everybody where to go trout fishing in some of the good spots. That was a place just outside of Salisbury. I had some nice fish to over seven pounds that day. I remember that one well. 
bream, did go fishing for bream. Used to catch bream on rivers, that's probably on the Hampshire Haven down under Royal Tea. Used to be a lot of bream down there, I suppose there still might be, if uh, if the otters haven't eaten them all. Um, a nice stream of weed. Oh, it was a lovely fishery back then. That was a different company that uh, publishers uh, tacked on to me. The Alternative Guide to Holiday Fishing, Deep Sea Fishing Around Europe. Basically, it was big game fishing covering marlin fishing, Canary Islands, Azores, all that sort of stuff. Portugal, all around there. Finally, we got a DVD that we did, Stalking Big Rainbows. That's one we did years ago. And, and this was at um, Avington years ago. Did a film there with a professional company. But when I was fishing there, I also did loads of articles for different magazines, trout fishing and that. And I got the exclusive. I got the first four fish limit with a guy there. I went along and listen, four fish you're allowed to catch for those who don't know. So you pay a day ticket or say what a broad they would call pay and fish, like you have golf, pay and play. You pay your ticket, you're allowed to keep, let's say, four fish. Well, the guy was a specialist at big fish fishing and he was going for the record at the time. And I want to say he got close to 80 pounds of trout with four fish. It was 70 something pounds of trout. And because he had the lake there for himself, I thought, I wonder if he'd let me fish. And I said, is there any chance of having a go myself? And I got double figures, not as big as his, but I did get some nice double figure trout as well. So, some nice advantages there from years ago. So, has anybody out there got every single book I've written? It's not that I'm putting up A for arrogance, it's just that people have been interested in these books, they've found they've helped them, they, they did them for beginners, they're not for experts. Experts, whoosh, off you go to the lake or river. It's for beginners, I've always been, as you guys know, trying to help beginners and novices Older people come back into the sport, just try some of the old school tips. They still work for me, and they might even work for you. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Bit of a run around in here, you've already seen them before in the background, but there's only when people sort of ask me about it. And the other thing I must do is go through all the uh, stuff I've got in the main office. Right, whether I think of something else to do or not, I don't know. I will let you know shortly.